So this was your second trip to Service Hubble. What was it, was. it like going back? It was uh, it was wonderful. I was very excited about the first opportunity to go. And uh, you, any space flight as an astronaut, you just you're really much lucky to have a job as an astronaut. And mm -hmm. getting a chance to go into space is a bonus. Any any mission is a good one. And uh, but getting to go to uh, getting a chance on my first flight to go to Hubble was great. And I enjoyed it so much. I was looking forward to my second flight even more. So I was really thrilled when I had the opportunity to go uh, on a second trip to, to Hubble. I think I, I think I appreciated it more. You know, I, 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 I felt a little more at ease, a little more relaxed because I'd been there before. Uh, and I also knew the wonders that were in store for us and uh, look forward to seeing those again. So I was really, really pleased, very, uh, very lucky to get a chance to go again. You guys rehearsed the Space Fox for months yes. before you actually go mm -hmm. up there. Um, Years, actually, yeah. <laughs> yeah. But obviously not everything always goes according to plan. Were there no. any sort of uh, situations like that on this mission? Oh, yeah. You, I, you knew something was going to happen. I mean, a couple of things went smoothly. More things went smoothly than didn't. but. Uh, even when we practice in the in our big water tank, we practice our spacewalks. A lot of what we're practicing is how to deal with problems. You know, things mm -hmm. go wrong in the water tank because you're working with tools and things you know, that don't cooperate. You know, uh, so uh, you learn how to get around those. And some some are real problems that you need to have solutions for, and mm -hmm. some are just things that pop up just because. You know, that happen to happen that day, or you know, and and you try to replicate as much as you can on Earth of what the real telescope is like. But it's not the actual telescope. It's a replica of it mm -hmm. that we practice on, and it's not exactly like the one up there. So things might be a little tighter than expected, and, and that's what happened in a couple cases. For example, uh, on our first spacewalk to replace this wide field camera, which is going to unlock the secrets of the universe, put a new camera, this new camera in. It's about the size of a, of a baby grand piano. It's not a little mm -hmm. camera, it's gigantic, big, but it, uh, it can take really cool images of the universe. Um, but in order to put the new one in, we have to take the old one out. And there's only one bolt that holds the old one in, and it's it was a little bit sticky. We weren't able to to overcome the torque. Mm -hmm. Probably mechanics, right? Yes. So we're good. Okay. So so in order to overcome that, so you don't break this this drive shaft, we have a, a torque limiter on the tool, which means mm -hmm. that it'll slip before you go and break the thing. It saves you. Well, we did that, and it slipped. We couldn't break the torque on that bolt. Drew couldn't. Drew and John were outside because mm -hmm. I was inside, just kind of. Watching and worrying, but but they were you know they were they, you know it slipped, so they had to try a different torque limiter, and that one slipped as well. So now they had to get rid of the torque limiter. And Drew on his very first spacewalk, on his first space flight, had to use his own self as a limiter and not bust this drive shaft. Dri drive shaft. So we would destroy the future of astronomy. It was all in his little hands, <laughs> even though they were inside of big gloves. They're still mm -hmm. his little hands. And then, but he was able to just put enough in it, you know to get it to budge. And then we were able to get that, that old instrument out. We never would have expected that to happen. We thought we, you know, we had replaced that instrument years ago. Not us, but another crew had. Mm -hmm. And we thought for sure. We thought, I guess we can blame it on them. But we were pretty <laughs> sure that it was, it was Jeff Hoffman, not that anyone in particular, but he was the guy that put the thing at night. He's a good friend. But with that, that, we had to get that, that thing undone. And uh, that, was, that was unexpected that we would run into that trouble. Mm -hmm. And we also had trouble with this handrail. Uh -huh. you, can, you, yeah. you can show that to your viewers. That is a handrail that I had to pull off, and they show this as well in the film, where uh, it, I had to remove that handrail in order to gain access to a uh, cover plate that had a failed power supply uh, behind it. And uh, this had to be removed, and uh, it was held on by four bolts, and three of the bolts came out, but the fourth one wouldn't. And I had to get this handrail out of the way to get to the, to the circuit mm -hmm. board, to just to get, then to take the cover off. So all the real hard work I thought was in front of us, but I just could not get this handrail off. And then the solution was to just bust it off. So you can see this in IMAX 3D of me <laughs> breaking this handle. But the handle's fine. It was just the bolt that is not here that was uh, destroyed. As I broke it, it uh, snapped right at the Oof. threads. So anyway, so those were things that were unexpected.